Look at these boys covered in tattoos. I see young girls walking around there tattoos all over their legs. Just all over themselves. It looks, it looks horrible. But watch the metamorphosis of the physical plane now even taking place. The Bible says your countenance will witness against you. The demons are infiltrating. So here you are down here. You and I see a God all the time. I say, God, we're down here in the middle of hell. I don't need to go to hell. I'm in hell. I've been to hell. I, I, this would be double jeopardy to send me to hell. I've been to hell. <laughs> <laughs> and you're down here fighting for your mind. Yeah. What, look how much stuff, stuff is slamming into your mind. Invisibly just slamming into your mind. Like somebody got a bat trying to tear your head off your shoulders. Yeah. Tear your stomach out too. Yeah. Yeah. I have to do that too. <laughs> You're a woman traveling, walk through the airport, and you hitting all these things. Hitting, bam, 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 bam. That's all this lustful spirits around you, slamming into your mind, lusting after you, just getting thought after thought, and this, and that, and like somebody got a, a battering ram just slamming into you. The thoughts are so heavy. That's the thinking of all the spirits around you that are unclean. It'll make you feel like something's wrong with you. That's why you got to put on armor and you got to yeah, fight. Yeah. You got to bathe your environment with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Not hip hop gospel and gangster, gangster gospel. You went back to the vomit. You went back to the filth of the world to try to find solace because it's a familiar spirit. You don't want to go back to the familiar spirit. But you know what, what I see is most detrimental to young people nowadays? They take God lightly. They want God light. They drink Miller light. They eat food that's light. They fly light. Now they want God light. I want God confined to my definition of him and my parameters for him. I don't want him to be an all-consuming God. I'm going to put God, I'm going to compartmentalize God. See, I pull God out when I want, like a video. I play this video when I want to see it. But when I don't want to see it, I put it back on the shelf. I compartmentalize God. I use Him at my discretion. But guess what? Grace and mercy are going to run out. God is not a hole to be pimped. Try to pimp Him and watch Him do you in. Watch Him hang you out to dry. See, you got you to gotta seek God while He may be found. Folks are silly concerning God because they don't really believe he is. All this creation yelling at you. The very, your very countenance, your body yelling at you that there's a God. Everything about you is yelling God. Your sight tells you there's a God. Your hearing tells you there's a God. Your feelings inside tell you there's a God. And then to pretend that God is not real. Not me, man. Not me. By little by little I'll drive them out that this land won't increase against you and I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea. Now here's, here's the real Israelite land. From the Red Sea even unto the Sea of the Philistines which is the Mediterranean. And from the desert unto the river that's going east to the Euphrates and all that over there. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. Now here's the key. Here's the key to being demonized and seeing an infiltration and the amazing transference of spirits. A covenant. They got to cut a covenant. What's a covenant? What's a better word for a covenant? An agreement. An agreement. How can two walk together? Lest they be agreed. They got to find what? A common denominator. They got to find something they concentrate on and you do too. That's what entertainment is all about. That's where the covenants get cut. Their promotion and your acceptance of their promotion does what? Cuts a covenant. Any person in the real estate knows for you to have a valid contract, you got to have two party parties that agree on the what? The conditions of the contract. That's the common denominator that buys the agreement together. The meeting of the minds. Meeting of the minds. Give and take. Give a little, take a little. Compromise, says Barack Obama and the Republicans. Look at this. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. The tribes are a type of the demons. 
The gods are the fallen angels that the demons worship. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. And if thou if, if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a what? Snare. A snare unto thee. A snare unto your soul. It's going to catch you up. It's going to hang you up. It's going to trap you and captivate you. It's going to mesmerize you, hypnotize you, encant you. It's going to get you caught up on them, concentrating on them, and you won't be able to serve me, says God. Now you go and you check out where the demons come from. You go back in time to Genesis chapter 6. I'll flash through here real fast because we talk about this so much I can flash through it but it's still people just listening to this for the first time. And I found whenever you talk about the demons and where they came from people always say, really? You really believe that? Uh, yes. <laughs> Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass when the men, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. Modern day religion and theology will always teach you that these sons of God were the, the, the sons of Seth. Or they were human beings from another plane. But the Bible, you can't make a human being fit into this. Try all you want to. A human being just won't fit. Watch this. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for they, for that he also is flesh, yet he shall, his days shall be 120 years. Now you know that's been narrowed down now to less than 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days. The word there, Nephilim, fallen ones were in the earth in those days. You go back in the Apocrypha and you pick up the books of the Apocrypha and you find that in the book of Enoch, they go into detail about the giants on the earth in those days. Now, a lot of people will say, say, well, Enoch is not part of the Bible because it's not part of the canon of Scripture. You know, the canon of, the, of Scripture was decided upon by church fathers. They left out Enoch. But it's funny that Jude refers to Enoch. He says, as it is written in Enoch. So therefore, Enoch must have some validity. And Enoch goes into even calling the fallen angels by name that came to earth. But folk don't like this. Why? Because the demons that control their minds don't like it. See, this is mental blockage is put up because it's expository. It exposes the kingdom of the devil. So we can't, no, we just want to stay in the natural and keep everything that's, you know, don't go supernatural, don't go metaphysical, don't talk about paranormal things because then it means I need God. I need supernatural power to deal with this and I don't have it. So I've got to downgrade the Bible to keep it all natural, all germane to the temporal plane, worldly. Don't go supernatural on me. That's scary. The devil's made it scary. Can't you see that scary movies are coming out every five minutes now? <laughs> they got so many scary movies now. You think, good night, what are y'all doing? Is all you're making is scary movies now? Everything's got a huge, ugly vampire. A werewolf. You know, little creatures and gremlins in the night. You know, little girl on a commercial crawling through a bed sheet with a flashlight and all of a sudden this big ugly thing. Just, <laughs> you say, oh Lord. Everything's trying to terrify you. Make you scared of spiritual things. You got to be willing to wade into the spirit world with armor, armor clad and going in heavy. If it's vampires out here, I'll meet you here tonight at midnight. Out in the field out here. All you vampires, meet me at, at midnight in the field. We'll see just who this God is. That's how you got to go in. You have to be so otherworldly and so gone that no matter what comes your way, whether it be natural or supernatural, let the chips fall where they may. But you got to be within, in the confines of what? What that angel is leading. Yes, Lord. Don't transgress the angel. Stay under the, the covenant. Stay under the covering. 
Or else you get your head lopped off. Look at this. There were giants in the, in the earth in those days, Nephilim. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. Now, wouldn't it make sense if you were talking about the sons of men or somebody's offspring like Seth? Just say that. The other place you see sons of God referred to is in Job. The sons of God went unto God and Satan went in with them. Angels. It's no big deal. We're dealing with fallen angels. What was the sin of these fallen angels? They crossed over from the fourth dimensional plane to the third dimensional plane and materialized. That's the sin of these angels. That's why the Bible says they're reserved in chains under the inner, uh, 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 with an inner earth chained in darkness because of their transgression. They crossed over a forbidden zone. They're not allowed to cross over into human domain and come in amongst the humans and interact with the humans and look what they did they came in unto the daughters of men that they bare children to them the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown superman when you see the movies Thor Spider-Man Batman Wonder Woman Green Lantern all these superheroes are a type of these children of the fallen angels. They are also known as Nephilim. Nephilim beget Nephilim. Fallen ones beget fallen ones. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every what? See where the corruption takes place? Remember when Nimrod built the Tower of Babel. Anything that they might imagine. They were in unison. They were in covenant together. Anything they imagine will be possible to them. Nimrod had the people on what? One accord. Demonically inspired. Unified together. That's what Satan is doing now. What's he doing? He's knitting the world together. In one spirit. How is he doing it? How do you knit the world together? Sexual unions. Don't you know you, you could have sex with a guy right here in Atlanta tonight. And join to a guy in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. A woman in Afghanistan that he's been with. And through amazing transference of spirits. You knit the world together with one mind. On one accord, all give an allegiance to the beast because they think in unison. And I'm going to tell you what really amalgamates them and, and seals that glue together and makes it hard. You know how you really unify people together and make them hardcore, just bound together in covenant and it won't be broken? Common enemy. And you know who the common enemy is? Christ. You, full of the Holy Ghost and full of Christ, saying there is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. We got to eliminate you. Why? We're diverse now. We're tolerant now. We're no longer homophobic like you. We believe in love and peace for all men. We're seeking after peace and safety. We're seeking after a global union, a global unity. We got a one world economic system, a one world political system, a one world educational system. Finally, we've got nirvana. We've got utopia. We've got the, the, the fifth dimension song playing on every speaker. Love steers the planet and love guides the stars. It's the dawning of the age of Aquarius. And here you are messing everything up with your stinking, filthy presentation of the Jesus that you believe in. That's a bunch of garbage. Jesus loves everybody. That's why they're coming now with universalism. Jesus accepts everybody just as you are. Homosexual preachers and priests and and, and, and now they're accepting the homosexuals as ministers in the churches because God loves everyone. 
God is just loving, kind. There's no judgment in God. There's no wrath of God, no rage. There, there's not even a hell. Caught the pistol to tell you there's no hell. Well, what's the Bible mentioning hell for, Carlton? That's the old versions. Have you got the New World Translation? Have you got the Universalist Translation here? Have you got the Jehovah Witness version where Jesus is Michael the Archangel? Have you got that version? No, I didn't pick up that. That's the New World Translation. You don't know what's going on. They changed the truth of God into a lie, the Bible says. Man, we're so close to the end of the age that you can feel, you can feel the, you can hear the sounds of the, of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. You can see those seven angels with those trumpets. Man, like they get ready to, look like the orchestra, those seven angels are standing up in the orchestra. Now you set, you get one session of the orchestra to stand up to do something. Those seven trumpeteers get ready to blow. The seals are about to be open. The last seven vials are about to be poured out. Man, we stand around the edge of final judgment. But guess what folks tend to do? Escape from the reality of it. Because I got plans for down here. Stuff I want to do. Stuff I want to achieve. Folks keep telling me about the end of the world and what's happening. They'll come and tell me. You know what's happening in, man, in London? They're burning the place up. They got a prophecy out right now about nuclear attack by the end of this month in this country. Did you know that? It's on the internet. Who cares? Is your world not mine? I'm not here to try to hang around here and like this and love this and be engaged in it. It's your world, not mine. I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. The things that are seen are temporal. The things that are not seen are deathless and everlasting. They're eternal. This is a temporary setup. Your own physical body is a temporary setup. Go out here to East Lake Cemetery and I'll prove it to you. Go out here to any cemetery, Westview, Crestview. And that's proof that you got a temporary house right now. Why try to build up some kind of a long term significance to this? Why feel melancholy and downcast about the end of the world? You know why you do? Because you love it. It's the only thing you've got. It's where you put all your credence. That's why they don't like Christians. Because they know instinctively a Christian is otherworldly and not from here. Don't, you don't try to sustain this. This is not your life. Your life is hid with God in Christ. You could care less about this because this is not your home. You're just a pilgrim passing through. They have some churches called Traveler's Rest. I'm just a traveling through. And this I just come to rest a minute. Because this ain't my home. I'm just traveling through. But folks that are ingrained here, engaged here, and believe in this, they get offended by you. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the right way to deal with it and the wrong way in just a minute. Okay, look at this. I want to set the stage here now. This is where the demons came from. What happened? God saw the wickedness. He repented the Lord that he had made man. He got a hold of Noah. Put him in the ark with his kids. I think it's eight people preserved and, and reserved. Flooded the earth and drowned everybody. Including the sons and daughters of the fallen angels. They became disembodied nomads and we call them demons. Makes you wonder why you had to raise the water up that high too. If they were just normal people. If they were normal people. A lot of people said that. They, they, <laughs> there were giants on earth in those days. There's no telling what was down here. And if you can see them now, it'll blow your mind now. Now what's happening is right now, the devil's reconditioning the minds of people to accept the horror of the demons. What do I mean by that? These are not humans. These are hybrids. They don't look like you and me. So you get shows like right now on TNT, they got, TNT, they got Fallen Skies. The show was built around aliens invading Earth. Actually putting a, a device on the neck of the children which makes the children begin to metamorphosize into the aliens. 
the aliens are basically eight-legged reptilians. But then they got another type of alien that's a tall, slender, giant a man that's real skinny. The end of the metamorphosis will turn you into this tall, elongated alien. But the reptilian alien is just the stage in the development. You see what's happening. He's joining back up. But the whole schematic of the devil in the end time is to get those Nephilim and put them into humans to make of you what they are. That's why they challenge your mind so heavy. That's why they bombard your mind so heavy. What are they trying to get you to do? Give up. Give up. Surrender. Surrender. Mm -hmm. Throw your hands up and accept us. Let us in. Bring them out that we may know them and make of them what we are. And you know the you know the, the silliest person on earth is the person that goes to the internet, goes to the TV, goes to BET, VH1, MTV, and opens the door to the devil to let him in. That's right. That's what makes a young person so cotton picking stupid. You telling them you're letting the demons in. They're going to metamorphosize you. They're going to turn you inside out and rape you and pillage and tear you limb from limb. But guess what? I don't believe that. I don't feel any difference. I don't feel any difference. I don't see it happening to me. That's somebody who they almost did it to. They, they'll tell you. Without the grace of God, I would have been lost out there. I was just about torn apart by it. There for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. It ain't nothing it's nothing to play with. Nothing to play with. When you've seen it and it's happened to you and you've gone places and done things you never thought. Yeah. You've been in foreign case relationships with a woman, I don't want to say woman, a female again, and you've seen some on her face change countenance. Yeah. I, I, I swear, I, I thought I saw eyes slip back and look like a reptilian face. Not only transform into a lizard, but it looked like something off of Avatar or something. And I even seen that movie. Yeah. One of the last times I did that and I really started focusing back in again. And it's real because, and I've heard story after story about stuff like that. Folks seeing stuff, people turning the other stuff in the bed with them. Tails. Mm -hmm. Tails on them and this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. See, when you get out here far enough, I told my youngest son, I said, you know what? See, you, you go out here and you want to go to the club and you want to fool around these little girls and play. I said, it don't, that's how it begins. Mm -hmm. You get out far enough. And when the visitation start in your room at night, when they come to see you, you don't go see them. You start seeing stuff come to your room at night. You meet one of these girls that's an astral projectionist, a real witch, a real warlock. We ain't talking about play play folk now. Folk that really serve the devil, pray to the devil, bathe in the devil. They get power from the devil. And you join in them. And they won't let you go. They'll flip you out on the inside. They'll drive you out of your senses. You'll be driven into madness. Why? Because you cut a covenant. You cut an agreement with them. So we're going to get deep into this in just a minute. I'm, I'm not even in yet. Now look at this. So you see where they come from here in Genesis chapter 6. Demons are the disembodied spirits, the hybrids of the Nephilim. They're wandering through the earth looking for somewhere to enter in. The children of the fallen angels. That when they cohabitate with a human, they metamorphosize you. They make you into people that feel compatible to them and you can interact with them. And their thoughts become your thoughts. See, you got to understand. The demons oppress the human spirit. Subject you to them and their thoughts begin to run the tabernacle. So your tabernacle is run by thought processes. It's just like a computer with a program. And they'll begin to live through you. What they like, you'll like. If they got perverse appetites, you'll have them. Now where, where are they taking you to? They're taking you to a realm of becoming a sociopath. Now what's a sociopath? I did a little word search here. You can do one yourself in your own time. You have no distinction between good and evil. They, they don't know anything about They have no normal perceptions of good and evil. A sociopath. A person 
as a psychopathic personality whose behavior is antisocial and who lacks a sense of moral responsibility or social consciousness. They can take a gun and blow your brains out and eat a bologna sandwich and feel nothing about it. Character traits, glibness and superficial charm. I always call it the Eddie Haskell syndrome. Good evening, Mrs. Cleaver. Hello, Mr. Cleaver. He is a sociopath. Manipulative and cunning. They, they never recognize the rights of others and see their self-serving behaviors as permissive, permissible. They appear to be charming yet are co- covertly hostile and domineering, seeing their victim as merely an instrument to be used. They may dominate and humiliate their victims. That's how a daddy molests his own daughter. She's just meat for me to use. A sociopath, no conscience. One guy that is just locked up in England or somewhere overseas, Germany, I forget where it is, had his daughter chained in his basement, for, uh, locked up in his basement for 25 years, molesting his own daughter. Grandiose sense of self feels entitled to certain things as their right. Pathological lying has no problem lying coolly and easily. And it is almost impossible for them to be truthful on a consistent basis. Can create and get caught up in a complex belief about their own powers and abilities. Extremely convincing and even able to pass a lie detector test. Because there's no uh, way to monitor. See, lie detectors te- test basically monitor your sweat glands, your heart rate, your respir- Respiration. So then they're, they're monitoring you to see if you start lying, if there's some kind of a physio- physiological change in you to say if you tell them to lie. Begin to breathe faster, sweat, perspiration is flowing out of you, your heart rate increases. But if you can be a cool, calm liar, that's demonic. See, this is all psychological mumbo jumbo. But I want you to understand and focus on the fact that this is about being demonized. Psychiatrists and psychologists have spent all these years trying to understand demons. Then you tell them it's just a demon. Now they want to lock you up in the insane asylum. Because guess what? The psychiatrists and psychologists are governed by what? Demons. Demons. So the devil is defining himself what? On his terms. You see something is wrong with somebody, right? So I don't want you to evaluate it as being a demon. So I'm going to expose it on my terms. That's why you got to become spiritual so you won't fall prey to the devil. Lack of remorse. Shame or guilt past of being a, a sociopath. Parts of being a sociopath. Shame or guilt. They have no lack. They have lack of remorse, shame or guilt. They don't show any remorse. No shame. No guilt. That's why a young girl can walk around almost naked and no shame in her game. So young girl, go and put some clothes on. Don't even have the, 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 the capacity to wear underwear anymore. Why don't you what, what you talking about? There's nothing wrong with what I got on. This is this is nice. I look good. No shame. No guilt. No remorse. A deep-seated rage which is split off and repressed is at their core. Does not see others around them as people but only as targets and opportunities. Instead of friends, they have victims and accomplices who end up as victims. In other words, they'll they'll, they'll, uh, solicit and enlist you as their accomplice and then make you their victim. Enablers. Somebody doing some dirt and somebody else enables them. Keeps petting them up. Kissing them up, petting them up, and nothing but a victimizer and a scumbag that's being petted up because they're demonized. Instead of having the demon confronted and cast out and bring the person back to their right mind, you just keep on making everything easy for them. Just going along with it. Well, you know, he's always been, well, she's always, well, don't say anything to them. Well, don't. That's the effeminate approach. To a person that leaves them messed up. Because the discipline of God, the power of God, the confrontation, the confrontation of God is never brought to bear on their lives. And you watch them go to hell, enabling them, talking about you love them. That ain't love. 
That's hatred. The end always justifies the means and they let nothing stand in their way. They make a way to do evil and iniquity. That's right. Crooked people. Always slithering around like a snake. Perverted. Looking for a way to do evil. Shallow emotions. When they show what seems to be warmth, joy, love and compassion. It is more feigned than experienced and serves an ulterior motive. Outraged by insignificant matters yet remaining unmoved and cold by what would upset a normal person. Outraged by insignificant matters but then calm, cool and, 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 and low key about what would enrage somebody else. You're seeing a whole world trying to marry each other as homosexuals and everybody calm and cool about it. And then mad because Mike Vick threw an interception and you're about to kill somebody because you stop a man had to death at a Giants and Dodger game, put the man in the hospital in a coma about a baseball game. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Arrested development. I'm going to get to that in a minute. You're ahead of me, you're ahead of me, John. <laughs> Since they are not genuine, neither are their promises. Think about it. I'm not genuine, I'm not authentic, I'm not sincere, so every promise I make is a lie. I promise you I'm gonna change. This time it's real. This time I mean business. Hey, I'll, I'll tell you this time I got with the Lord in prayer. I've been fasting and shut in. And the Lord, I just, I'm, oh, I thank God for the Lord. He just came through and showed me. They're not authentic, so their promises are not authentic. That's why you're not called to get locked up in them. It's every man for himself as far as getting on board of this, this thing, getting, out, getting off the Titanic. Everybody better know how to swim in cold water. Because one thing about it, the Titanic is going down. Incapacity for love. Can't love. Why? Because they can't be selfless. They're all into themselves. Need for stimulation, living on the edge, verbal outbursts and physical punishments are normal. Promiscuity and gambling are common. Callousness, lack of empathy. These are all demons. I'm talking about a demonic infiltration and invasion of the soul. What you'll become like. A sociopath. Unable to empathize with the pain of their victims. Rape somebody but you can't empathize with their pain. All you think about is me. This little Anthony case down in Florida. That's a sociopathic mind. All I'm thinking about is me. If you're a mother with a daughter that's dead, you're torn apart. See, there's nothing normal about that. But all I think about is how do I get off and pass that filth of liquor in that joint and put on these booty shorts and get me to the club. Mm -hmm. Sociopathic. Having only contempt for others' feelings of distress and readily taking advantage of them. That's how a pimp works with a prostitute. All he sees is her distress and her emotional damage. And he's, and he's just looking for a way to make money off of her. He could care less about her being healed up and helped. How can I use your disempowerment and your destruction to my advantage? That's a sociopath. Poor behavioral controls, impulsive nature. Rage and abuse alternated with small expressions of love and approval produce an addictive cycle of, for abuser and abused, as well as creating hopelessness in the victim. Believe they are all powerful, all knowing, entitled to every wish, no sense of personal boundaries, no concern for their impact on others. When you see a kid beginning to become like this and you see how crazy they are, they become a sociopath. They have no concern for anybody but themselves. You cook dinner and you come back and there's nothing left in the kitchen but bones, empty trays and empty, empty, empty uh, pans and pots. And you say, hey, look, nobody else, nobody else ate. And they just wiping their mouth with their hand. Well, I, well, I, I, I was hungry. Well, what's everybody else going to eat? Well, McDonald's down the street. What's wrong with you? In their minds, nothing is wrong with them. Because all they can see is what? Self. Self. 
All I'm concerned about is three people. Me, my, and I. That's it. That's a sociopath. Early behavior problems. Juvenile delinquency. Usually has a history of behavioral and academic difficulties. Yet gets by by conning others. Can't really pass in school. Really <coughs> incapacitated and unable to learn the data. But conning your way through. Just trying to get a C. Copying folks work. Getting somebody to write your term papers. A lot of dumbed down guys in college get their girlfriends to write their papers. But guess what? When it's, it's, it comes time to perform on the job, you don't know. You can't measure up. You don't, you're always trying to get over on somebody because of your own incapacitation. Problems in making and keeping friends. Aberrant behavior such as cruelty to people or animals. Stealing, etc. Irresponsibility, unreliability. Not concerned about wrecking others' lives and dreams. Oblivious or indifferent to the devastation they cause. Does not accept blame themselves but blames others even for acts they obviously committed. I raped a girl but she had the business being so naked. Well, you're the one that, well, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have. Never can say, raise your hand and say, I am the guilty party. I did it. Promiscuous sexual behavior and infidelity. Promiscuity, child sexual abuse, rape and sexual acting out of all sorts. Part of the sociopathic behavior. Lack of realistic life plan. Parasitic lifestyle. Tends to move around a lot or makes all encompassing promises for the future. Poor work ethic but exploits others effectively. I always got a plan they're working on. But it never comes to fruition. I always got a plan for tomorrow. What I'm going to do. You can escape the school like that. You ever seen a perpetual eternal student? <laughs> That's just escape. It's just jive. It's just mess. Sociopathic behavior. Criminal or entrepreneurial versatility. Changes their image as needed to avoid prosecution. Changes life story readily. I remember they had this movie came on about this guy. What was that guy's name going? He met this woman. What was his name? Rockefeller. He was, he was out conning a woman. Playing like he was one of the Rockefellers and rich. And living off of the woman's money. And get angry at her talking about, don't be asking me about my money. We Rockefellers don't, and he didn't have a dime. And she settled with this guy. This was a true story. I mean, she, she settled with this guy for like $800,000 to leave her and, her and her daughter alone. You get out there with one of these fools and they'll take you to the hoop. May state readily that the goal is to rule the world. All germane to the sociopath. A strange weird creation. Now as far as developmental things. And developmental uh, things in your life. A lot of people are arrested in their development. Arrested development centers around the day the demon came in. He'll stop you right there. And he'll arrest your development at a certain age. He can come in at eight years old, molested by your daddy. That demon will shut you down. Your all system will shut off. Every switch in you will be thrown off in you. He'll arrest you right there. You can't go any further. So you'll be, you'll grow up a 25 year old girl built like Marilyn Monroe with an eight year old girl's mind. You know how dangerous that is? That's a six year old girl driving a tank. Walking around and guys just Falling all over themselves for the girl. She got a six-year-old, eight-year-old mind in her head. Guess what a child will want walking around like that? Huh? Toys. Toys. You give them stuff. That's how the girl's getting played. They're arrested. Get your nails done. Get your hair done. Here's some clothes. Here's some shoes. You can ride in my little car. See, I got a nice, see my nice shiny sports car. You can sit in me, sit here in this car next to me. Drape your hair down and put your shades on, baby. You're gonna look good when you pull up to your friends. They're gonna all be jealous. You're gonna be, you're gonna be heavy. 
You're going to be rolling heavy. You're going to have bling bling. You're going to be a showgirl. NBA players play them heavy. Football players play them heavy. Baseball sports figures play them, play them heavy. Tiger Woods played them real heavy. But now he's feeling the curse of being of doing what he did. He's a sociopath. Can't you see how messed up this boy's mind was? It is. Messed up. But you take a six-year-old arrested mind and you give them toys to play with. That's a good word, uh, John, toys. Just let them play. A guy like that, you do the same thing. He wants a trophy wife, a showgirl. So you dress right, you know how to look for him, you know how to make him feel like a man when he's not one. You play to his ego. This is the world we're living in. Can't you see him lifting them all up? Kim Kardashian, the Braxtons, uh, Paris Hilton, Pam Anderson. Go on the list of them. You keep, I can keep naming them one after another. This little, this little gold, gold mares girl with, with Justin Bieber, all play, play, make believe. All of them come through Disney. They all come through make believe, uh, fantasy stricken environments and almost get destroyed from it. Christina Aguilera, J Lo. Now get a divorce, talking about she feels like she's been shut in and this guy's holding her back. She doesn't want to be a mom. What causes all that? You can't do what they do and stay faithful. I'll show you how that works in a minute. Arrested development. You walk around in a grown person's body with a child's undeveloped mind. That's demonic. Sociopathic behavior is demonic. They got all kinds of names. I could go down. It's a lot of psychological disorder. I didn't even go through all the names for this stuff now. DPD and D, D, B, D, B, P and PDB and all. They got all kinds of initials for uh, uh, psychological problems and stuff. Why? Because these are the demons defining themselves. And I want you to say these are demons. One of the most uh, famous ones is. Schizophrenia, schizophrenia, or what they call what? Multiple personality disorder, MPD. How can you have personalities without a person? That's what's happening. They get in and then define themselves psychologically as some kind of an aberrant behavior that's psychologically based. Then I want you to pull the cover back and find the demons. And I'll show you. How Jesus dealt with the same kind of a deal in the Bible. Mark chapter 5. Here's what we call somebody with MPD. Multiple personality disorder. But Jesus didn't call it multiple personality disorder. He dealt with the demons. Because that's what it really was. Remember we're talking about the amazing transference of spirits. Mark chapter 5. This is something we read a lot. And, and people are um, familiar with this. So I can kind of skim through it. You know the story. The Gadarene demoniac. He went down to Gadara. Verse 3 it says. And it was a man who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could, could bind him. No not with chains. This guy was able to break chains. So don't come talking about uh, everything's just natural and everything's just temporal and just chain him up and forget him. He can't get loose. This guy was breaking chains like twigs. Supernatural demonic power that manifests physically. That's where we're going. Why don't they raise up now? Why don't you see manifestation of the devil real hardcore now? No threat. There's no threat. What is it going to flex for when the church has no power? Right. Don't even recognize who they are. So why expose myself? Right. Why go for the juggler vein when I got no threat? I can Im immerse myself in personality and live. I'm a fat devil, so I eat all I want. I'm a glutton devil, I eat to my, to my heart's desire. I'm a fornicating devil, why expose myself? I'm fornicating all I want. I'm a porno devil, I watch as much porno as I want. Why rock the boat? So they don't expose themselves. 
And you'll never find a demon in this Bible exposing themselves until they're confronted by God's power. Jesus walked in a room and they cried out because power was coming against them. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. This was a type of what? Mutilation. Tattoos. Piercings. Cuttings. Markings. Can't you see these people are mutilating themselves? Beautiful girls mutilating themselves with tattoos and piercings. Some of them look like baby dolls. And they make themselves look deformed and mutilated by what they do to themselves. Crazy. Then you end up like this little wine house girl over in, in, in London. Dead. That girl had problems from day one. And nobody said a word. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Who did that? The man. The man had enough of his mind to go and throw himself down before Jesus and worship him. So the devil ain't going to worship Jesus. But the man saying, I'm captive. And he drug himself and threw himself at the master's feet to worship him. And what, he was, what was he pleading for? Help, Help me. I remember years ago in the world when they brought out the exorcist. The little girl carved out on her skin two words. Help me. Scraping out with the, on her skin. Help me. Because I'm down here in my body with this devil oppressing me. And I can't express myself. Somebody help me. Imagine being a prisoner in your own body. That's exactly what the devil will make you. He'll live out his life. At your expense. They are leeches. They are leeches. They are blood sucking leeches. They live off of you. And once they get through sucking all the life force out of you. They throw the container away. I.E. Elvis Presley. Michael Jackson. Marilyn Monroe. Go down the list of them. Jane Mansfield. All these people. Once they got through with them. Some of them died young. Used them up. Threw them away. Little Lisa left out Lopez. Didn't even make it to 30. Tupac, Big, Tupac, Biggie Smalls. You can keep going down the list of them. It goes on and on. You li- The faster you and harder you live, the, the faster you die. Because they're siphoning life force out of you. They're taking life out of you. They're using you and using you up. Look at Luther Vandross. Young, dead. That homosexual spirit sucking the life out of you. You know a lot of homosexuals that die young before that time. Because the homosexual spirit used them up. Had them doing practices that gave them the disease to kill them. And then they get mad at you because you warned the righteous and warned the wicked. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. That wasn't the man. For he said unto him, see this this was in response. For he said unto him, referring to Jesus, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And in response, the demon cried out with a loud voice. See, you see what I'm saying? Jesus said, come out first. Verse 8 happened before verse 7. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. What is Legion? He's the ruler, he's the commander. My name is Legion. I command many, we are many. He talking big talk now. And he besought him much that he would not send them them away out of the country. He, the demon commander, sought Jesus not to send them, the multitudes, away out of the country. That, that's a revelation there. Your soul can hold a lot of devils. A lot of personalities. Here's your MPD, your multiple personality disorder, your schizophrenia. 
You're flashing in and out on me. You're going, you're looking crazy today and normal tomorrow. You're sexed up on Wednesday. You're depressed on Tuesday. You're weird. You're crazy. Personality is flashing in and out. Like a strobe light. You're crazy. All they do now is what? Drug you up. Pump you full of riddling as a school to quiet you down. In school to quiet you down. Trying to deal with the demons. What do drugs do? They incapacitate the brain so the demons can't manifest. They deaden brain center so you can't manifest. They just quiet you down and drug you up. So the body is not able to be used. That's the devil's answer for demonic possession. Now there was now there was there nigh unto the mouth of the great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him. I don't know how you get all these devils talking at one time. That sounds crazy. Saying, send us into the swine that we may enter unto them. Now you either had devils talking rapid fire from this man's mouth or Jesus was engaged in telepathic communion. You know what I'm saying? He could hear them. But he picking up all those spirits talking. The spirit world runs on telepathy. It's telepathic. You can hear the unseen. You can see the unseen if God unveils the spirit world to you. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Another revelation, demons can get into animals. That animal lurking outside your front door, don't take it too lightly, that black cat. That can be a witch's familiar with a demon come to spy out, spy out your liberty. See, church folk don't want to deal with none of this. The demons got into pigs. This, this didn't go away anywhere. They can get into animals. Beware. Because we're dealing, we're going, we're getting ready to go supersonic now. So don't be walking around scared and all of that. Because you never know what might be lurking. And you might just run into Mr. Ed. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. And no one can talk to a horse, of course. Unless, of course, that talking horse is the famous Mr. Ed. Wouldn't you be messed up if you went to a farm and went in there to get some milk from a cow and the cow turned around and looked at you and said, Hey, why are you grabbing my udders? <laughs> They'd have the barn door you walked in and then the side door you made. <laughs> You know how you have a cartoon in the door and the and the and the thick it's shaped like a running man. That's how it'd be in the side of that barn. <laughs> Cause you would be getting out of there. A mouse on the foot of your bed yelling at you to wake up. And you wake up, you're looking at a mouse talking to you. Can't you see all these t- these these cartoons and TV shows and all this stuff about Alvin the Chipmunk and all of that. We're going supersonic, y'all. See, people think all this stuff is funny. You think when they, you be looking at when you're looking at werewolves and vampires and stuff that they're just doing that? Hey, look, your mind's got to expand its borders. I'm not saying to go around looking for stuff, but you can't be shocked. By super, look at Jesus standing here talking to demons who are asking him to allow them to go into pigs. Now, if you're standing there right now in 2011, all the church people think he's crazy. Think about what I'm saying. You think the Son of God is crazy from your indoctrination in church. You can walk with Jesus with present day religious teaching in you because he would offend you. Exactly. That's what I'm trying. That's the point I'm trying to make. You've got to expand your mind now for then. Before the thing jumps off, have your mind abstract enough just to walk in the midst of this mess. Read Revelation. Revelation is so supernatural. There's so many stuff, much stuff going on in Revelation. You can't go in here with a carnal mind in the times of Revelation. Read Daniel and try to walk through Daniel with a temporal carnal mind. You're going to blow gaskets in your mind with religious indoctrination, theology, and seminary training in this. Man, please. Like the young people said, child, please. 
And forthwith Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and then the denomination of church folk were afraid look at this when he was crazy cutting himself in the tombs demon possessed you walk around him like everything's all right but then he comes and he's sitting and clothed in his right mind and I'm afraid you don't think it's weird? Going to a club tonight. Everybody in the club is insane. But if you're demonized like them, you fit right in. You ever seen a dance floor? I remember when I was headed toward getting saved and I was in the club. And it's like God just woke me up for a minute in the club. And I looked around the room. I said, these people are crazy. I'm in here with them now. This is this place is crazy. Look at these people. And you had like a something brought you to yourself in the middle of them. You saw it all for a minute. You, what am I doing here? And you see people and you look at them and what they're saying. And you see insanity in front of you that you absorbed into it. And then it kind of went away and you went back. Oh, give me another drink, you know, just go back to drinking the liquor and <laughs> Looking at the girls and hey, you know. But I just it that flashed in front of me for a minute, then I came back, you know, I came out of it and went back into La La Land. And that's what it's like. You come to yourself. But if you're in it, you can't see it. That's right. takes pictures. She'll stand in front of the camera and say, hey, you're blocking him. Move to the right side. Then why? Because she can see the picture. Why? She's not in the picture. But if you're in the picture, you can't see the, the picture. When you're in the world, absorbed into it, you're crazy and insane and don't know it. What do you need? A divine intervention. A divine revelation. You need God to intervene in your life and interdict your insanity. You need God to somehow get to you and open your eyes, open your ears, make you see life for real. Because you're basically a walking dead person. You're dead in what? Trespasses and sins. You can't see. You don't know the guy you're dating will kill you. You're not aware he has AIDS, chlamydia. You don't know you just got herpes last night. You thought everything went on fine. The one night stand was just a one night groove. No problem. But now you're marred for life. You're damaged goods that nobody wants from here on out. They might tell you on TV you told your lover you had herpes and he married you anyway. Try it in real life. <laughs> Tell your lover you got AIDS in real life and see if they stay with you. On TV they'll say, well baby, you know, they, well you know, that's fine. I still love you and things happen. I, I still want to marry you. That's what they say on TV, in the movies. In real life. What? They might want to beat you up if you build with them. There's another door made. You know. <laughs> on the side of your house. You didn't have that door there yesterday. Now they got me. There's another running man door. If they're leaving you behind. See, movies and stuff are not real life. Folk don't want you. Folk don't want you if you've been fornicating if you're a woman. I don't care what a guy tells you. I don't care what kind of player you're talking to. In his mind, you really damage goods. He's not going to tell you that. But that's how they see you. That's why they call you a hoe. These old female dogs, they call them the B word. That's, all they, that's how they see them. Trash that I'm using. I don't want them. I want to use them for a minute. They're a latrine. They're a commode. And you know what you do with a, with a latrine and commode. You get rid of body waste. I got some built up semen I got to get rid of. And I'm going to dump it in you. Ho. 
That's what they, that's how they see it. Whether you want to believe it or not. And that's what you become to them when you're out there in the world and ignorant of the devil's devices. It ain't pretty, so I don't try to make it pretty. Thank you, Lord. And even in, even in sin, you if you're trying to be with that person or thing, you can't because at the same time you won't be with that person in sin without knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're trying to be good on your own. You don't want to take that person back home to your mother. No. While you're there over at their house and everything, you're trying to make it work. You're trying to think I love them and everything. You're laying there with them. You're trying to think good about them. But you can't think about taking them home to your parents. Yeah. You can't think about having a wedding in front of all your family with this person. You can't do it. Those thoughts keep popping back in your head. It's not yeah, because you think it. Man, you too nasty to meet my family. How you know they're nasty? I made you nasty. I don't want to take nobody as nasty as you that I made nasty back home with me. And here you are, the dirty low down dog that did it. Uh-huh. That's how, but sociopathic behavior. And we, we'll go back to the sociopath. The demon possessed sociopath explains it all. And I just say that because I was one. I can come out and say Well, that. yeah, I mean, I mean uh, hey, everybody here. Yeah, you're, it's, it's a, raise your head if you were like that. Oh, yeah, the hair over here. You know? So that's everybody, man. You know, everybody's the same. Amen. And it says, they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. And after, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray or beg Jesus, depart out of our coast. And when, he saw, and when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord have done for thee, and have had compassion on thee. You see how deliverance from demons is compassion? Yes. That's mercy and grace on display. To lift the demonic heaviness out of your soul is compassion. Yes. But you got a generation of people that want to accommodate the demons. Yeah. Live under the oppression. Yeah. Man, driven by dope, alcohol, pornography, perversion. Don't let a homosexual convince you that they're happy. Yeah. You're not happy be, being sodomized, drinking another guy's semen for water. Don't hand me that, man. You paint that make-believe smile on your face and pretend to be happy. You go out here and get a marriage license and marry somebody in misery and torment. And you try to make folk believe you're happy and gay. That's why the devil changed the name to gay. As if you're happy. It's a lovely life. It's a beautiful life. Let's describe what you do in darkness. Let's describe what you do behind closed doors. Don't hand me that man. You live in misery. Turmoil and torment because of the demons. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Let the redeemed of the Lord go say so. And men will marvel at what you say. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. The amazing transference of spirits. Let's drill down on a little harder, then we'll wrap it up. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. Know you not that the un- unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. The word fornicator there is pornia. All kinds of illicit sexual activity. No fornicators will come in. Nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. The word there is malikos. Men that have feminine traits. Effeminate men. Lady-like, girl-like characteristics. Soft men. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Sodomy, oral sex, any kind of perverse thing that you do is makes makes you an abuser of yourself with mankind. It said no homosexuals, Perfect. <laughs> nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were you can try, probably change that some to all. Such were some of you, but you were you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. 
All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats are for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it, the meats, and uh, it, the belly, and them, the meats. So you got a belly and you got meat, but God's going to destroy both the belly and the meat. Don't don't get caught up in it. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. So you have no right to take control of your own body, because your body is designed for the Lord. And God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know you not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know you not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For the two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee. Fornication. Run from for, for, fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is outside or without the body. But he that commits fornication sins against his own body. You are decreasing your lifespan. You're doing yourself in. You're killing yourself through fornication. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which you have of God and you are not your own for you are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Fornication does a lot of problems. It creates a lot of problems. That's why these unclean spirits in Sodom wanted to know the angels. They wanted to do what? Have intercourse with them. Now we got to understand what intercourse really is. When I say intercourse, most people think of sex. But intercourse, is, it has a broad definition. You can have spiritual intercourse. Interaction. The Bible puts it this way. Evil communications corrupt good manners. When you interact and have intercourse with somebody, it will corrupt you if it's the wrong spirit. Intercourse, according to Webster's, is the act of running between Connections between persons of, or groups. Copulation or, co or coitus. The act of running between gives you the, uh, the sexual depiction of a man entering into the vagina. Going into the vagina to have intercourse. Connections between persons or groups. This is how the devil's knitting the world together through spiritual and sexual intercourse. Copulation. Another word for sexual intercourse. What does copulation mean? It means to fuse together. Permanently, an example of it being welding. When you have sex with your wife, you actually are fused together. Welded together in, in copulation and intercourse. Coitus is sexual intercourse. It means to go together. The Bible depicts it as cutting a covenant. To mark as belonging to another by the transferences of blood. What happens in intercourse. This is where the damage is done to so many young girls. You are designed... By God, as a young woman, to have your virginity intact until you get married. You are designed by God as a young man to have your virginity intact until you get married. Why? It does major damage to you if you don't. Every young girl is born with a hymen. What is a hymen? It's a fold of mucous membrane partially covering the opening of the vagina. Your vagina is partially closed when you're born with a hymen over it so you, you don't have a full vaginal opening yet, a vaginal opening yet. It's got a hymen there blocking access. The word hymenial means of or relating to marriage. Hymenial comes from the word hymen. What happens? You get married. You consummate the marriage with your husband. His penis will breach your vagina and break your hymen. And you'll bleed. 
over his penis to cut a blood covenant with him. He will ejaculate semen into you, which is the blood bearing uh, uh, liquid from a man that actually makes your bloodstream. That's where your bloodstream comes from. It comes from your daddy's semen. That's what makes blood in you. He marks that woman as his what? Better word. Not property. You don't want to be property. Huh? No, that's like a slave woman. Flesh, that's clothes. Boy, that was real close. He marks that woman as his field. To do what? To grow. To sow. Okay. <laughs> you get close, man. You have the right word. It's not, it rhymes now. The word you use right to grow, no sow. <laughs> to sow what? Fruit. His seed. <laughs> you don't sow fruit, you pick fruit. Girl, you almost on it today. You know, you're getting real close. He marks the woman as his field to sow his seed to produce what? Offspring. Offspring after his own kind. You never seen the field keep his own name, nor the offspring. They bear the name of the sower. He marks his field. He marks the field. That's his wife. That's my field. So, buddy, what are you doing sowing in it? When that blood from the woman spews over that man's penis, what is it saying? This is the only one that sows in my field. It's a blood covenant. You welded yourself together through copulation. You become a couple. Coupled together. That's your fruitful field. When you fornicate, what happens? You go out there with different people sowing into your field. Your mind and your your brain is now thrown into chaos. Because what, what is it not able to identify now? Who is really husband? Who is my husband? Who's supposed to be sowing in my field? I become a babbling brook, an empty-headed, moronic whore, a scatterbrain. It'll make you scatterbrained all by itself. Because you can't identify who. Marry like that and see what'll happen. The marriage won't last but two months if if if, if, if you if you if you through painful indulgence it may last two years. That's what's so pitiful about a little girl like Kim Kardashian trying to get married this week. You get married under a curse. Because very, the very fabric of your mind can't even identify your mate. You're shot to hell in the, on the inside. Because you went out there in fornication. That's why God says if you fornicate you sin against your own body. Because you got no identity. You don't even know who you are. And you can't know who you are to join in somebody else now. The actual organs we possess cut the covenant. When you breach that vagina and that hymen is ruptured, that's a volatile act. Guys on the street will tell you, man, I don't want to be with no virgin. Virgins fall in love with you. You know why? Because they identified you as... You're my husband. You should be eternally with me. You're, you're mine and I'm yours. And the guy spit in your face and say, look, ho, I don't know. Uh, I don't join to nobody like that. Now, you just somebody I want to be with now, ho. Don't become hanging around me. Well, I'm pregnant. A ho like you, you could be anybody, baby. You lay up in the hospital and have the baby by yourself. You go home with your mama by yourself. And now you sitting there laid up having been made a fool of because you cut an illegal covenant with a no good, dirty, low down fornicator and your life becomes ruined unless God intervenes to restore you.